continued prosecutorial misconduct may show a course of conduct establishing the intent to provoke a mistrial and bring into play double jeopardy considerations. You have not been here the whole time, and we thank you for being here. But starting with opening statement, and I know you got my motion. I know, and I know what your argument is. Here's the thing is that, and I understand what that law says as well. Ms. Love does not appear to be trying to get a mistrial so that she can try this case over again, which I know if that were what she was doing, she wouldn't be able to try the case over again anyway. So that's just not applicable here. Now, is there continued prosecutorial misconduct grant merits a mistrial anyway based on that? Yes, potentially we get to that point at some point. But there is not, from what the court's vantage point is, an indication that the state is trying to goad anybody into moving for a mistrial so that they can retry the case because they think they're losing the case. I think they think they're winning the case. I don't know what they think, but I will say this. This is not becoming in the state of Georgia of a trial. And it is all the time, Your Honor, it is all the time. At some point, it's got to end because this is not fair to Mr. Williams and I assume the other people on trial will agree. It is just constant hiding laws, citing law that does not stand for what it stands for, not giving over information, not answering the court, arguing with the court. And I think it does rise to a level now, but I understand the rule. But I think they've gone well beyond it. And the reason I said it's all these things is it's literally. Oh, I saw that. I know. I mean, I think my frustration was apparent a few minutes ago. But I truly am struggling with whether all of this is purposeful or this is just really poor luring on the part of members of the state's team. Either way, it's really unfortunate. If it's something other than poor luring, then it is more than unfortunate. 